Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about which business model is better, Shopify dropshipping or Amazon FBA. I'll go over the pros and cons of Shopify dropshipping and Amazon FBA, and you'll get to decide who wins. These two business models are what people always seem to be in between. And the re reality is that both can provide you a really big opportunity to earn money online. So if you're wondering which of these two models to follow, then keep watching this video. What's up guys, welcome to today's e-commerce business model face-off. In case you're new here, I'm Nick Young of Seller Tradecraft. And I started dipping my toes into the e-commerce space about four years ago as a sideline project. And after just six months, I quit my job because my online sales had generated an income of five times more than my salary. That gave me the personal and financial freedom that I always craved and it opened up the door for me to set up my own company and to be my own boss. So, most of you watching this video are probably looking at how you can make a side hustle with an online business. And unless you've been living underneath a rock, I'm sure you've heard of the exciting opportunity that e-commerce offers. It's a crazy space right now. And I know this because a lot of people are always asking me, which of these two models are gonna bring me the most profit? What's gonna be the better choice? So before we get knee deep into this topic, I want you to first consider subscribing to this channel and hit the notification bell if you're interested in creating a passive income online. We'll be creating new content every single week to help you build your own profitable online business. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive back into our topic. So let me first give you an overview of how each of these business models works. And after this video, you're gonna understand what's the difference between the two. So let's first start with dropshipping. What is dropshipping? The dropshipping business model means that a seller like let's say me or you, doesn't have to keep any inventory on hand, doesn't have to own any inventory, and only buys inventory whenever a sale is made. So essentially, a seller like myself would partner up with a supplier who manufactures and warehouses these products and ships them directly to the customer. This way, there's no need for a seller like myself to own or rent a warehouse to store the products. So I actually don't own the product at all if I were to drop ship. The the transaction happens only when a sale is made. So let's go ahead and walk through how the dropshipping model works step by step. Step number one, you create a Shopify store to be your own online storefront, an e-commerce shopping platform. Step two, you drive traffic from various sources, offline traffic like Facebook and Instagram ads to your storefront. Step three, you get the customer to place an order and they pay for it. Step four, you then forward that order to the supplier with customer details. And step five, your supplier ships the order directly to the customer for you. This is all done without ever seeing, owning, or touching the products. And here, you never have to take any inventory risk because you only buy a product when you make a sale. Your focus is entirely on marketing and optimizing your storefront. This means that you never have to invest money in advance for the products and you only pay a supplier for a portion of the payment received from the customer. Okay, so now that we've covered dropshipping, let's go ahead and dive into how Amazon FBA works. So when you find things to sell on Amazon, what you do is you list them on a product page, you label it under your own brand, and then you send it off to an Amazon FBA warehouse where the items are stored, then packaged and received and shipped when the item sells. Now here's the major differentiator between dropshipping and Amazon FBA. In the Amazon FBA business model, the seller needs to park money up front to order products from the supplier. So that means that you're ordering inventory in advance and you own the inventory. And once you receive it, you go ahead and send it to Amazon's warehouses for fulfillment. Now with Shopify dropshipping, there's no need to send and store items in separate warehouses. Again, you only order items from the supplier and they'll take care of the shipping and send the product directly to the customer. Typically though, this means that doing dropshipping, you'll actually make less profit, which I'll go ahead and dive into later. Now, with the Amazon FBA business model, Amazon handles a major portion of the fulfillment and selling process. It makes it a lot easier for sellers who own inventory to focus on finding profitable products to grow their business. So to help you further understand how this works, let's go ahead and just quickly walk through the steps of actually selling a product on Amazon so you can see what parts the seller handles and what parts are handled by Amazon FBA. Okay, so step number one, you list the product on amazon.com. Step number two, you prepare the item to send to Amazon's warehouses. 
Step three, you ship the items to Amazon's warehouses. Step four, Amazon unpacks and stores your inventory and receives it. Step five, Amazon shows up, or sorry, your product shows up as available on amazon.com. Step six, a buyer from Amazon, right? A buyer who goes to the Amazon website, places the order on Amazon. And step seven, Amazon warehouse workers find your product and ship it to the customer. Step eight, your customer receives the product in let's say two days if they're a Prime member. Okay, so here, once the products are listed and ready for sale, it's handed off to Amazon and they actually take care of all the rest. Amazon handles a lot of the hardest and most time consuming parts of having an e-commerce business. All right, now that we have a clear picture of how dropshipping and Shopify works and how Amazon FBA works, let's go ahead and now dive into the pros and cons. So this is what you guys have been waiting for. So really, I want to preface this, depending on your needs and your situation, this is understanding all these parts is going to help you decide what works best for you. So let's first start off by talking about startup costs. With Shopify dropshipping, the most appealing advantage of this model is that there is a lower startup cost. There's really virtually no upfront cost for the product itself because you're only buying it from the supplier when sale is made. So it's all on an as needed basis. So you don't need to pay for storage fees or anything like that. So after finding a drop shipping supplier, all you need to do is actually set up a Shopify website, which costs about $29 a month and have enough money to do advertising. Because remember, you have to drive all the traffic to the website yourself. So this actually brings us to one of the major cons of doing Shopify dropshipping because you'll be using advertising from external sites to bring traffic to your store. Now, at the very least, your budget will probably range from $500 to $1,000 a month, but it'll definitely scale up and up as you are driving more and more traffic. And this is all spent on marketing and ads. And with the Shopify model, you'll be doing tests. You'll probably run through at least 20 products before you find one that'll be a winning product for your web store. So in reality, you could probably spend a lot of time and money doing a trial and error on products that may or may not work. And it could take a longer time depending on your level of experience with advertising. Now let's go ahead and dive into costs for Amazon FBA. So if you're doing private label on FBA, um, you know, you can actually take, take advantage of the traffic that Amazon generates to their own storefront, to their own marketplace. So it's actually, if you don't know already, the most visited e-commerce site in the world today. Statistics alone show us that as of December 2017, 197 million users visited Amazon's websites per month. So with that huge number of traffic, you really don't have to do as much paid external advertising on Amazon as you do for Shopify running Facebook ads. Okay, but since there's competition on Amazon, Amazon actually has an internal PPC system, which you can use to drive internal traffic from Amazon to your listing. So you can get your products to appear on the Amazon searches. But the reality here is that the learning curve with Amazon PPC is not as steep as learning, let's say Facebook ads or Google ads to get the advertising needs. So trust me, th there's gonna be a lot of tools that you can find to help you find the right product and what keywords to target for your ads on Amazon. So if we're gonna talk about startup costs, entering the Amazon FBA private label space will require that you have a higher budget for specifically paying for inventory and also paying for fees for shipments and logistics to get your products from China or wherever you're sourcing it to the warehouse. And once it's at Amazon's extensive warehouses, there's also an additional fee that you have to be cognizant of, which is the storage fee that Amazon charges you on a monthly basis for fulfillment. The other things that you're gonna to have to consider is that there are fees for designing, for photography, for buying barcodes, all of which are part of your branding process in making your product unique and stand out from the pack. So realistically, you can start selling products on Amazon with about three to $5,000 of startup budget, um, mainly spent for your products. But keep in mind, although you might be spending a lot for the upfront quantity, realize that you're buying quantities in bulk, which means you're getting the bulk price, right? So that means that you'll get a higher profit margin compared to selling something on dropshipping. Starting capital might be higher with Amazon, but there's, you'll have a better chance of getting a higher return on your investment through doing private label and selling your own brand. Now let's go ahead and talk about marketing costs. Okay, so this is another one. So I kind of touched on this earlier. Shopify dropshipping, when it comes to marketing, you really need to master a lot of the skills when it comes to Shopify dropshipping. 
things like marketing, traffic generation, conversion optimization, brand building, working with comparison start shopping engines. So what you, you can expect is there's gonna be a steep learning curve because setting up the Shopify site is easy. The hard part is actually driving traffic to your store because there's no immediate audience to go after. So really this is the massive differentiator between dropshipping and FBA. In dropshipping, you drive traffic to the website mainly from paid traffic. And you can't be successful in dropshipping without knowing how to create Facebook ads. And to get good results, you have to understand how to create Facebook campaigns using custom audiences or lookalike audiences and other advanced and interesting strategies um, like setting up conversion campaigns or using pixels um, to retarget audience members. So you'll know how to do things like you know, you'll have to learn how to do things like reading Google trend graphs, creating Google ads, setting up email campaigns, and even reaching out to Instagram influencers. So these are all things that you have to think about if you're setting up a standalone Shopify site. Of course, you could also do free traffic through, let's say, SEO, but you also have to realize that to get traffic from SEO, it's gonna be a long process because you have to spend a lot of time creating content, and it takes a long time for, those, for that content to build and rank so that you actually get traffic to your store. So in reality, to get your store started up front quickly, you'll need to have a good skill set with understanding how to create paid traffic ads. Now, let's go ahead and shift gears and talk about Amazon FBA marketing costs. So with Amazon, you don't need to create Facebook or Instagram ads, and you don't have to do SEO from the ground up. You benefit from Amazon's massive budget on gathering customers and their algorithms and their expertise. So you can leverage Amazon's astronomical traffic Okay, I mean, based on statistics alone, Amazon has almost 2.64 billion visits from February 2018 to July 2018. That's just completely mind blowing. So what that means is there's an existing trust that Amazon customers have with Amazon. With that said, all you really have to focus on is optimizing your listing and driving traffic using Amazon's PPC system, which is vertically integrated within Amazon FBA. And one of the most important thought concepts to understand is that the people who visit Amazon already know what they want to buy. All, they need, all you need to do is to find the relevant keywords for your product and make sure that your listing appears in the search results. So with Amazon, you don't need to focus as much as establishing a brand. Um, you know, thanks to Amazon's goodwill and thanks to their fulfillment, you know, you'll be able to take advantage of Amazon's massive, massive traffic. So let's go ahead and dive into fulfillment because this is a really important thing to consider when you're deciding between the two models. And really, you know, this is where I think Amazon really stands out from the dropshipping model. And the reason why is because Amazon has a crazy unparalleled fulfillment network, meaning they own distribution centers throughout the US and throughout the world, which makes it really easy to fulfill products to customers. And so since Amazon takes care of the fulfillment, they also take care of a lot of returns, so you don't have to handle any returns or anything like that. And a lot of the customer service is taken care of for you. People can call Amazon and they can go ahead and get things resolved. And so this, this means that as an Amazon seller, you'll have enough time to focus on building your business and finding more and more products. Shipping time obviously plays a role in online buying decisions. And so another thing to consider is that while some shoppers might be happy to wait a few days for their order to arrive from overseas, a lot of people are used to getting their products really quickly. So this is where Amazon really comes into play. They can deliver products up, up to 22 days, okay? Sometimes even 24 hours. So that's where it stands out. With dropshipping, usually lead times are longer because suppliers aren't as reliable or maybe they're shipping from overseas. And so Amazon FBA is basically the main reason why Prime exists. Okay, so essentially for those of you not familiar, Prime members pay $13 a month to get two days super fast shipping with a bunch of other added benefits exclusive to Prime members. Um, and at some point, Amazon will be using drones to deliver packages to the doorstep. But with Shopify dropshipping, it's entirely different. Your orders are sent to your suppliers, which means that they have to process the orders and typically they're gonna be slower shipping times. So if you use the dropshipping method, you're gonna rely heavily on communication with the supplier. And if the supplier fails to update you that they're out of stock, then you won't be able to fulfill the order and you risk having a bad, terrible customer experience. And this can be a massive challenge. So it wouldn't be wise to just have one supplier. A lot of people actually have as many as two or three suppliers just in case one supplier doesn't work out. Um, so because ultimately selling something that you can't deliver on time can ruin your reputation. 
For many Shopify sellers, finding a great dropshipping supplier is incredibly challenging, and it can take weeks or months to find the right person. This really requires that you build and maintain a solid relationship with your supplier. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into product selection. So this is a key factor for the business models on both ends. Now, in both Shopify dropshipping and Amazon FBA, you're gonna have to spend hours foraging and finding the right profitable product. And it could take weeks and even in some cases months before sellers find that one winning product. Dropshipping enables you to find a slew of new products. You can give try to a new product, you, to something, and it's not as risky as if you were gonna purchase a product in bulk, because remember, you don't take any inventory risk. In Shopify, you can sell trending products, and this can help you earn a huge amount of money fast, because you can move very, very quickly. All you have to do is find the right product and drive traffic, and that can be done in a matter of days. Now, with Amazon FBA, selling trending products is possible, but it's not necessarily recommended, because there's a long lead time from when the product is produced to when it arrives at the warehouse, especially if you're sourcing from China. So it could be a huge problem if let's say you're working with a trending item and by the time the product arrives, it's no longer trendy, then you're stuck with so much inventory and you won't know what to do with it. And remember, on top of that, if you have dead inventory, you'll be paying for storage fees to keep the products at Amazon's warehouse. Disposing of these products are gonna force you to take these this investment at a loss. And so that's something you want to absolutely avoid. And that's why choosing the right product is super crucial to finding success on Amazon FBA. On Amazon, really the key is just to find a product that's already selling well, um, but that find a product that's selling well, but it also in a niche where you can compete and you can dominate your competition. The good thing is that there are a ton of tools that can help you find winning products on Amazon. You can use software tools like Market Intelligence from Viral Launch to validate your ideas and help you find good products that already work well. And you can use that information to study the competition and check on historical data and trends to help you see what the upfront costs and profits are. And if you want to do keyword research, there's a fantastic tool called Zonwords, which you can use as well. There are just a ton of tools out there available for Amazon sellers. You can also follow step-by-step -step methods and strategies that are proven to work and get your listing to the front page of Amazon search results. So it's been proven. It's, it's a systematic method. Now, let's go ahead and dive into competition between both of these models. Now, I'd say that there's a different nature of competition between Shop Shopify dropshipping and Amazon FBA. With Shopify, there's something that I like to call indirect competition, meaning that you won't find competitors directly close to your store. There are gonna be, of course, other shops that sell the same product because, of course, you're dropshipping, but the difference is, in Amazon, the competition is literally one click away. On your listing itself, there's gonna be other advertisements for the exact same product from other brands. So let's say, for example, if you search for yoga mats, you can find up to 3,000 results, okay? So keep in mind that there's always competition in both business models. That's why finding a good product in a good niche with less competition is always gonna be crucial for your success. But I would say, in this situation, it plays a more crucial factor in Amazon FBA because you know, the barrier to entry to marketing your listing is very low. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is price factor, okay? Um, related, and this is loosely related to competition on Amazon. We could say that price plays a massive factor if you're selling online, um, if you have competition with a ton of other people. Unlike, unlike Shopify, where they're just on your store, you know, and they're unlikely to go and search on other channels, on Amazon, competition is literally found on the same page, so pricing is gonna be a massive factor. But there are certainly ways to make it work. There are certainly ways to be a top Amazon seller and to compete on things other than price, like reviews, um, you know, ranking, doing giveaways, all that kind of stuff, making sure you have good images. And you can focus on adding more values by offering more features or bundling your products or doing better copywriting and keyword optimization. All right, so profit margins. Let's dive into the thing that you really, really want to understand and figure out. What is more profitable between the two, Amazon FBA or Shopify dropshipping? Both methods are, of course, good options for making money online, really just depending on the circumstance. The entry or the barrier to entry in the dropshipping world, I would say, is very low. Dropshipping suits people who are new to the online business space and have a small initial budget when getting started. Um, it also really benefits people who have existing knowledge and experience of how to drive traffic using things like Facebook or Google AdWords. But 
That also means a lot of your product margin is gonna be spent testing audiences and using your budget with potentially little return. On the other hand, Amazon FBA offers awesome opportunities to generate a lot of income online with less marketing costs, but it requires a lot more capital for inventory to get started. I would recommend at least three to five thousand dollars. And if you know you really want to make it work, I think ten thousand dollars is a fantastic amount to get started with. Another thing to note is that in working with a Dropify supplier, margins are usually lower than if you were to private label something to sell on Amazon. With higher risk usually comes higher reward, and the higher risk is taking on that inventory risk. But the reality is that you know whichever one you choose, just be aware that either will take work and capital to get started, and you need to treat them both like a serious business in order to succeed. So real quick interruption, guys. I wanna first thank you for staying with me this far. I know I've discussed a lot of things, and I think it's a good time to ask you this. What do you think? Is Shopify gonna work better for you, or do you think you'll get the most return through Amazon FBA? I'm gonna continue talking, but as you're, as you're listening, go ahead and leave the comments in the below of what you think, which is gonna work best for you. Now, let's go ahead and move to another comparison area, which is how sellers can differentiate, okay? So which model has the best opportunity for someone to differentiate their listing or their product? Now on Shopify, sellers can have a lot more freedom to differentiate with other online stores through things like branding and marketing. Here you can do segmented targeting or tailor the experience and use different advertising tactics based on the Facebook audience profile. There's a lot of room for creativity here if you understand the bias psychology of your niche. You can really build a strong funnel. Now on Amazon FBA, the customer experience is completely standardized. Just think about it. If you buy a product, you go to the listing, all listings kind of look the same and there are very few ways compared to let's say a Shopify store that you can differentiate from the competition. But this can also be an advantage because Amazon has incredibly high conversion rates. And that's because Amazon, again, has gained the trust of millions of people and people go to the site with the intention to make a purchase. If you think about it, if you were sent a Facebook ad for e-commerce store, right? It, that's not always the case. Someone, I, I know I personally clicked on an ad just to see what the company is about, just see what they're selling without even purchasing anything. And so that's usually not the case with Amazon. People aren't window shopping as much. They go there with the intent to buy something. So let's go ahead and dive into the next comparison, which is customer service. So let's go ahead and dive into the next comparison, which is customer service. Now with Amazon FBA, you have to remember that Amazon already takes care of customer service and Amazon FBA sellers will be less hands-on with this aspect, which means it's a way more passive way of producing income, at least on the tail end of the model. Now with private labeling, most of the work is done up front. Once the products are shipped into the warehouse, the Amazon takes care of all the fulfillment work for you, including customer support, like returns, and that makes it really passive. Dropshipping, on the other hand, requires that you check every day for the orders and that you fulfill them. It's actually a really, really manual process. Of course, you can also hire out the work to a VA once you're successful, but in the beginning, it's gonna be a manual process and it's not gonna be automated. And with the dropshipping store, you might find yourself answering questions um, in emails, chatting to customers on live chat, or even talking to customers on the phone just to get a sale. You might also have to deal with refunds, returns, and that's a tricky one because where do the returns go to if you don't have a warehouse? And complaints because you're the middleman between the supplier and the customer. Customer service is incredibly time consuming and it becomes a daily task that you either need to do or hire someone to do it for you. With FBA, Amazon ha handles most of this for you. There might be you know, the occasional message within Amazon, which you should respond to, but you're not spending your days talking to customers one-on-one. -on -one. People can call Amazon directly, and that's an incredible part of the Amazon FBA experience. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the next, next comparison, which is quality control, and I think this is a major one that a lot of people don't talk about. So if you think that Shopify sounds less risky, you have to know that there are so many physical parts of the business, physical aspects of the business that are completely out of your hands. So you might have to commit to, let's say, high packaging quality, quick handling and shipping time, stock and availability. And the reality is with dropshipping, a lot of these aspects are completely out of your control. You need to rely entirely on your dropship supplier and they're probably on the other side of the world and have a different business culture from you. Unlike with Amazon FBA, you could hire inspection companies and they can make sure that you get a good product and it's a physical thing that you touch. Okay guys, so I've already discussed pros and cons. Now, let's go ahead and just talk about the benefits of both of these business models. One major benefit is both of these online businesses are online, right? 
Um, and so that's really massive. You don't have to have a physical store, which is great. Both, both are trusted models. Secondly, a lot of you that are watching this video because you're probably working full-time job and it doesn't give you the freedom or income you want. And so both of these models give you an opportunity to earn so much more than you would imagine. It's great for supplemental income. Whether it's dropshipping or Amazon FBA, you can have the flexibility to work your own terms and be financially independent. This way you can actually do so much more and have more fun things to do like traveling or enjoying more time with your family. And the reality is that both models can work from anywhere in, around the world, meaning that you can work location independent. As long as you have an internet connection and a laptop, you can really run both businesses pretty easily from a computer. Another thing to consider is that both require sellers to hustle a lot in the early stages. It's not an easy thing to do. Now, sellers have to find a unique competitive advantage in order to stand out above the competition and generate substantial revenues. And the biggest advantage is that you don't require a brick and mortar store for making your business. So this makes, this saves you from doing a lot of capital investment in the beginning of your business, which is really just tiresome and scary for any new entrepreneur. All right, so now you should have all of the information that you need to know to get started on dropshipping or Amazon FBA. But let me ask you this. If you have a successful business, what would you do with your money? Now, before I end this video, let me give you just a brief conclusion. Remember, dropshipping suits people that are new to online business and have a small initial budget when getting started. And it also benefits people who want to get exposed to a range of different areas of e-commerce e and digital marketing, which I shouldn't understate. And if you're new, you should expect to have a steep learning curve. With Amazon FBA, on the other hand, there are amazing opportunities to generate a massive amount of income with less work but it might require a lot more initial investment to get started. Now, if you have a higher risk tolerance and have the budget to start with Amazon FBA, this might be great for you. And it will provide you a massive opportunity to reach seven and eight figures just like us. But just like any form of business, both Amazon FBA and Shopify dropshipping requires a lot of hard work, dedication, and determination to succeed. So whether you're selling via Shopify dropshipping or through Amazon FBA, the key is just do a lot of research and put a lot of effort. So that's it guys, thank you for watching. And if you find this video helpful, then thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because we'll have a lot more upcoming videos that'll help you build a sustainable online business that you can use to create personal and financial freedom. Good luck guys, bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.